Okay, so uh, I I'm gonna be honest here. Most of the comments that I've been reading so far, uh, the majority of them, they the myths aren't very unique if, if you want me to actually put it to you in the real way so i mean go leave a quick comment down below of a unique myth you would like me to test that is what keeps this series alive i try and read as many comments as i possibly could and the ones with the most likes tend to be the myths that i use most also while you guys are down there leave a quick comment down below of your favorite season of fortnite of all time for me personally, I'm gonna have to say season 2, I just enjoyed the way the map felt, how the game felt, just how, I, I don't know, I think it's just because people build too much. But overall, in my opinion, way back in season 2, the game was way more relaxing, just way more casual, but I, it's not like that anymore. Anyways, in today's episode, we got some very good myths that I found in the comment section from you guys, so without further ado, let's begin today's episode. Kicking things off, the first myth is, can two clingers collide in midair and stick together? I'm not gonna lie, this was a pretty difficult myth to do because honestly, you have to throw two clingers at the exact same time and have them collide in midair together. In game when I did this, I built two platforms right next to each other with a little wall in between. That way, I could get myself as well as my second count to aim in the exact same place. From there, I threw literally multiple clingers, maybe a good 30 or 40, just consistently to see if at least one of them would just collide in midair and maybe stick together and create maybe a massive explosion. After throwing multiple clingers multiple times, I ended up going back into the replay mode to see if any of them ended up colliding together. After a very long process of going through each and every single one of them, I ended up finding one where it looked as if they literally collided in midair and they definitely should have stuck onto each other. The next myth is, what happens if you drop into the volcano while inside of a cannon? Doing this myth, I literally got a cannon from down the hill and I pushed it all the way up to the top. It, it took quite a while, but I ended up doing it. Once I got all the way up to the top, I did one big push and I got into the barrel of the cannon. And as you could tell, when the top of the cannon ended up hitting the sidewall, it automatically kicked me out. I then flew directly back down to try and get back into the cannon after flipping it right back up. And as you can see, whenever the cannon is on its wheel side, not upside down, you will bounce inside of it as many times as it possibly could. Overall, while you're inside of the cannon and you're just kind of bouncing around, it's not much different as if you were in an ATK, a shopping cart, or even a quad. Overall, this was a very highly requested myth and pretty interesting. Jumping into the next myth, the next myth is, what happens if you land on a launch pad while inside of a cannon? This is one of those myths where you, you won't really use it in game, but it, it's still pretty good to know anyways because, I mean, why not? In game, I built up a platform very similar to last episode where I dropped a cannon on a launch pad. This time, we're going to be inside of the cannon and we're going to push onto it and see what happens. When I got all the way up to the top of the ramp, I did one big push, I jumped in the barrel, and as you can tell, when I did land, it did shoot the cannon straight up. It made the cannon's barrel actually pointing straight up and down, which I thought was pretty interesting, and it did launch my player off, which was weird. I then tried it one more time, and as you can tell, I literally landed on top of the launch pad, where I was able to literally run around, dance, jump, do any sort of emotes, and nothing would really happen. This was a weird glitch, I don't know exactly how you could do this every single time, sometimes your player will launch up into the air off of the launch pad, others it will literally just sit there and your player will kind of glitch on top of the launch pad itself. Overall pretty interesting and definitely a good way to figure out how to land on top of this. The next myth is, if you stop pushing a cannon well on a hill, will the cannon roll or just lock into place? After pushing a cannon up a hill for a pretty long time, I found a point on the side of the volcano where it was actually very steep, to a point where if the cannon were to roll away, it would go very, very fast. In game, when I ended up getting to a point that I felt satisfied where the cannon would roll, I let go of it, and as you can tell, it literally just flew down the mountain, and it even jumped off of some rocks, and ended up stopping at a chest, which luckily stopped it. But if you were in a regular match and you accidentally let go of the cannon while pushing it up the hill, you will definitely not catch back up to it because that thing literally goes flying. This is similar to like an ATK or even a shopping cart, all of these behave the exact same so I guess this kind of counts as a shopping cart vehicle. The next myth is, what happens when a llama lands in the volcano? To do this, I went into creative mode by using a glitch to get back to the spawn island and place down a platform, then spawn some llamas to see if I would break the platform beneath and they would actually drop. 
In game when I did try this though and I did end up destroying the platform underneath it, the platform kind of glitched out, the llamas floated in midair but it acted as if it was still there. Luckily though, a llama actually did end up spawning in the middle of the volcano surprisingly, just down at the lava and as you can see it, it literally did not change whatsoever. I guess the only downside to this is if you are trying to loot the llama, you can't really stop at it, you kind of have to shoot at it in the volcano, which it may still be pretty difficult to do in a regular match. In a regular playground match as well, I found a loot llama standing in the middle of this volcano and you could tell just how hard it is to try and loot it just by holding down whatever button it is for you to use, so you have to shoot it instead. Jumping into the next myth, the next myth is, what happens if you grapple someone who is using a rift to go? In game, this myth doesn't really matter much anymore since grapples have sadly been vaulted in the latest update. I, I don't know why they would get rid of them, they've just gotten rid of like all of the fun weapons and items in the game. But in the case that you are grappling someone who is using a rift to go, if you are close enough it will still activate but if you do press the grapple button to shoot the rope out right before they use the rift to go, before the plunger actually hits the player and they do teleport away, it will automatically appear as if it didn't hit anything and your rope will come back with the plunger and it will act as if nothing really happened. Luckily though, I, I don't think this really has happened to anyone in the middle of a game. The chances of this and you grappling on someone is so low. The next myth is, what happens if you shoot yourself from a cannon directly onto a launch pad? In game when I tested this out again, I built up a little bit of a platform as well put a launch pad on the ground very nearby that way I could get a little bit of a height advantage then just literally shoot myself straight down onto the launch pad. I aimed the barrel of the cannon and pushed it forward towards the edge so I would make sure I would hit the launch pad and as you can tell from a good distance away you can still see the stats of the launch pad regenerating health. Surprisingly though, when my player was launched out of a cannon and he did end up hitting the launch pad, it just literally went straight through the metal platform and broke the floor as if my player didn't even hit the launch pad at all. This is weird because if you do try and hit the launch pad with a pickaxe, you are unable to break it. The only way to break it is by breaking the floor beneath it and you literally go through both at the exact same time in this case. Definitely not a myth I would really use in a regular game, but still interesting to know anyways. Jumping into the final myth, the final myth is, if you throw a bottle rocket or a boombox onto a pyramid, then edit it, will the bottle rocket or the boombox fall? In game, when I did this myth, I threw the bottle rocket on the top of the pyramid, so it would literally be up at the tip top, and I edited the pyramid in every single formation that I can. After trying multiple times, if the bottle rocket is literally on the peak of the pyramid and you do edit the floor, it, it literally won't change it at all. The bottle rocket will still be in the exact same place, shooting as if it is still on the top of the pyramid that's not changed at all. I then wanted to test if this was the exact same case if you were to throw the bottle rocket on the side of the pyramid rather than the tip top. In game though, when I did do this and the bottle rocket did land on the edge of the pyramid, it fell once I was able to edit it and sadly it ended up breaking the pyramid, just shooting it all, doing damage, no nothing too special overall. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode, I hope you have enjoyed it. if you have, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe if you are new to the channel. Also if you want to have a chance to have your myth featured in the next or future episodes, go down in the comments right now and comment a unique myth and usually the ones with the most likes or the most thumbs up or the most unique I usually do in all of my videos. For all of you guys that made it this far, go down in the comment section below and drop a question for a q and I'm thinking about doing a super long Q&A video, maybe like an hour or even two hours, where I literally go through and answer as many questions as I possibly can and try and feature every single one of you guys. I've been wanting to do something like this for a pretty long time, so if all of you guys could go down below and drop a question, that would be awesome. Anyways guys, I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you guys next time.